And then if we are finally looking on to the, uh, the women's phone to freestyle, we have Hannah Miley going there as well. Okay, well, thanks, Sally. We'll move straight into the very first race. And uh, I'll tell you the names of these swimmers once the race starts because it's a very long race. It's the final heat, the fastest heat of the 1500 meters freestyle. And I'll give you the names once the race has started. In the end, there are only five swimmers in this heat, the fastest heat. Uh, uh, so there has been some withdrawals, but I'll give you the names once the race starts. In uh, this men's 1500 fastest heat in uh, lane number two for London Aqua, Reese Worth, he entered on 15 minutes 56. Uh, in lane three, uh, representing Loughborough University, Caleb Hughes, he entered on 15 minutes 15 seconds. In lane four, a man who made a big name for himself both at the Commonwealth Games and also at the European Championships. Uh, this summer, Stephen Milne of Perth City. In lane five, representing Loughborough University, Tony Robinson, he has entered on 15 minutes 13. And in lane six, Chris Lowther, a city of Glasgow, he entered on 15.25.5. Now, Ali, um, I would have thought that Stephen Milne, the way he swam yesterday, but also, of course, all year, has been so... Fantastic. I would think he must be the hot favourite for this event. Yes, uh, Charlie, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Stephen uh, showed great character yesterday. Um, probably not the tidiest swim that he's uh, ever swum, but uh, 342 in the 400 shows that he's in great shape uh, at the moment, it's, uh, despite the fact that he's under some pretty heavy, heavy training at the moment. I know from his coach, Ann Dixon, uh, from Perth City, that um, he's... He's not rested for this event. He's just had a couple of days to freshen up. Uh, and he certainly showed that uh, even though he's working pretty hard, that he can come out with, uh, uh, out with the goods. So I expect him to dominate the race. But interest, it'll be interesting to see what tactics he employs, whether he, uh, like yesterday when he went out super quick, um, where this time round he looks as though he's gone out a bit more relaxed on his stroke, a wee bit longer, uh, and therefore try to perhaps build the 500s uh, throughout the race well it's this magnificent stroke he can you know when you have a stroke as good as this he can change gear which is something that not everybody can do he can really put on the pace he swam the first 200 meters in 155.5 I'm working very comfortable in the earlier heats the fastest time so far swam and uh, these were swam uh, earlier on in the uh, in the morning 15 minutes 47.2 uh, and I say the morning it was yesterday morning I think they swam these ones uh, but there were some withdrawals so we only have five here but th that time in theory um, could challenge here but with the entry times here so much faster than that um, I can't see it being there as a, uh, a time to threaten the podium places so uh, that looks like a 59 point there from uh, Stephen Milne. Um, he'll be looking to get way under the 15 minute marker, I think. Uh, this one he swam 14.54, around about that, at the recent uh, North District Grand Prix. So he's obviously in pretty good shape, uh, and he seems to be just stroking it out at the moment, not really challenged uh, by Tony Robinson or uh, Caleb Hughes at the moment. But you never know, Charlie, you, these things change quite a lot in the 1500. Now, just to help you spectators for the evening, uh, the way that the lanes are numbered here, the lane at the top of the picture is lane one, and the one at the bottom end of the picture, bottom of the picture is lane eight. So uh, Stephen is swimming there in lane four, What throws you a little bit here because there's only five swimmers, but Stephen is in lane four.
So I think that was around about a 59 again, 59 point. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like a 58 mm -hmm. high on that yep, one, yep. which is uh, pretty good going mm -hmm. so far. But if we put things into context of the World uh, Championships in, uh, in Doha, I think uh, Italian uh, Palcineri, um, looking as though he went 14, 20 odds, round about there to win the World, uh, the world Championships. So there's probably yeah. a wee bit of a gap between what Stephen's going to do tonight versus what uh, Palcineri did out in Doha. Yes, I mean, I think he'll be a little disappointed he's not being able to chase some of the guys who who were entered for this event and who, who have withdrawn but uh, he's a tremendous young swimmer this Stephen and I, I don't remember how much time uh, he's taken off his 1500 meter this year but uh, um, quite a lot if I remember. Yes that's right uh, last season long course he dropped from a 15-16 down to a 14-52 so uh, that's a massive drop. He dropped down to 15.03 at the Commonwealth Games and then on to the Europeans after that, going 14.52, where he, I think he missed out on the bronze medal by a couple of hundredths of a second uh, to Paul Janssen, um, the Danish swimmer. So he clearly learnt a lot from the whole of the season. Unfortunate not to pick up uh, a couple of medals in that, uh, in that process as well. But that said, if yeah. you look at the series of swims that he's actually had... He's gone 58, 1452, 346, 147, and 49 point for 100. So um, he does do the full range. Yeah, as I understand, I mean, he um, swims in Perth, and of course, they uh, have some very good swimmers there. And uh, Ann, um, Ann Dixon is the coach, and then manages to take them over to train in the new 50 meter pool in Dundee, and also over to the new. Well, not so new, 50 meter pool at Sterling. Um, so they, they look for the longer course, long course opportunities as well. They're looking up to see his length, number of lengths he's still to do. He'll see the 35 numbers ha held up there. It's quite easy to lose count. I'm old enough to remember these events being swam over 1650, and uh, the number of times both officials and swimmers lost count was quite amazing. <laughs> 16.50 there, Charlie. That was in the days of uh, Infirmary Street in and Glen Ogle and Portobello, of oh, course. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> even national championships used to finish on a rope. They swung them in Aberdeen, for example, <laughs> and Monaco at Baths and 40 yards long. And, uh, you know, it was quite extraordinary trying to keep a count of the lengths. Yeah. So, so uh, big lead from Stephen here, though. Second place in the in lane five. That's the next one down towards us at the bottom of the... is uh, Tony Robinson from Loughborough, big squad here from Loughborough, that's the purple cap of Loughborough there That's right, the, uh, the squad from Loughborough uh, come along with coach Kevin Renshaw uh, Caleb Hughes uh, going third at the moment in lane three uh, Caleb originally from Hatfield Swimming Club, uh, now coached by uh, Ian Wright um, and he's just ticking along quite nicely at the moment as well, but Tony Hughes Tony Robinson just starting to make a wee bit of a move towards uh, Stephen Milne at the moment. So still about five, uh, four, four or so seconds just behind. Just gradually reeling him in. So um, I think just Tony picking up his speed and Stephen just keeping along nice and even, even around about 59 lows at the moment. Uh, that's a 59 and a half, 59 six there from uh, Stephen. Um, but Tony uh, Robinson there, just keeping nicely under the uh, the 15 minute projected mark. So that's a pretty positive swim for for him at the moment. Stephen Milne just uh, ticking over nicely, but. To Tony Robinson still just reeling him in Great a bit. And uh, now that's about three three seconds difference between the two swimmers. Caleb Hughes still in third place. Um, out there in lane two, we've got Reese Worth. And in lane six at the moment, uh, Chris Lowther. Chris Lowther, a decent 400 yesterday as well. I think roughly about 354 yesterday, which is a good PB for him um, as well. So a uh, pretty good field here. So I think uh, Stephen I, I didn't 
at these split times now, whether we're, he was, I remember, doing around about 59 point. Uh, I think, I suspect he's just about on 59 still. Yeah, I think it's 60 uh, point yeah. flat on that yeah. one, I think. He's just started to drop a little bit off the pace. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see uh, shortly how he's, yeah. uh, how he's going. Still maintaining his stroke there, still looking pretty comfortable with it. Um, I guess it's quite difficult sometimes in these races where you're just doing uh, uh, rep after rep. You've got to keep a really good concentration yeah. as to what's going on. It's not easy sometimes when you're doing it on your own. Um, but distance swimmers, you know, Charlie, that they are uh, in training, you do rep after rep after rep and uh, doing, uh, trying to practice that same pace, even pace with the same number of strokes every time. It's not easy to maintain that, but it's something that's practiced on a, on a daily basis. Yes, he's still sneaking under, I guess, so 59 points there, so 59 and a half there. So Stephen Milne just coming through now to uh, pick up uh, Reese Worth out in lane two, just uh, coming through. It'll not be long before he has Chris Lowther in his sights as well. That might just encourage him to pick up his pace a little bit more. Still maintaining his uh, distance off the wall, but maybe uh, on his transition into his stroke, just starting to open up a little bit, causing a little bit more resistance, but... Into the last third of the race now and uh, working pretty hard. So he's now got the 16 lengths to go. And uh, it's some quite enjoyable, I suppose, for him to be overhauling the, the back markers here. But to be fair to them, they, their entry times were quite a lot slower. Uh, out there in lane two is Reese Reeseworth from London Accra, and in lane five, Chris Lowther from the city of Glasgow. Tony Robinson uh, from Loughborough still going uh, around about a minute point for uh, for his hundred, so he's nicely inside the uh, 15 minute mark at the moment. He's an entry time of 15:13, so at the moment he's on course for a. Uh, a pretty decent 20 second PB and um, there's something very him. special about making it through these minute barriers isn't it when you yeah. move under the 15 in this case yeah absolutely uh, yeah. getting under uh, 15 minutes short course is a first step a towards big. managing to do it long course of yeah. course so um, Tony Robinson really doing a good job at the moment yeah. still looking comfortable but working hard Caleb Hughes in third place and he's not a million miles off the 15 minute marker either so it'll be good to see if he can just squeeze under so Stephen is looking so comfortable still he's not having to work too hard but I, I think he's maybe almost under instruction maybe just to some quite within himself really here isn't he I think he's working pretty yeah, hard. Yeah. He always does. Yeah. He goes for it. But uh, it's the same thing as if you've got a race going yeah. with you, then it's a little bit easier yeah. to raise your game, yeah. especially when it gets to these last uh, couple of hundred metres. 12.47, uh, Stephen Milne turns in there. So still going at 59 highs, 59 and a half. So yeah, Tony Robinson turning in 12.53. And Caleb Hughes at 12.58. So... Uh, Caleb Hughes still hanging in there under the 15 minute marker. So, so it's just the six lengths now to go after this turn for Stephen. It's, uh, it's one of the things I've noticed these days, Ali, is these top end uh, 1500 metre swimmers have pretty good kicks. This didn't used to be a characteristic of a 1500 metre swimmer, but they. Many of them seem to be able to kick really well. Absolutely, and I think these days at any level having a six-speed kick that you can use is um, extremely important as you want to try and crank up the speed. Um, in the days of two-beat kicks and dragging your legs, I think uh, for the most, for most swimmers, that's, that's pretty much gone now. So 
13.47. So remember he entered on 14.52. So I think we got a good chance of going well inside that. So he's going to hear the sound of the bell as he turns at the start end. Now maybe an area has just really put the kick in. You see the feet even coming out of the water there. Uh, it is, and we'll watch this last yeah. turn just to see what his skills are like. But the last one, he went eight, nine metres off the wall, which is pretty good at the back end of a 1500. And there it is again. He's really kicking in. That's it, here he goes. This is going to be an excellent swim, really under control all the way. 16 fourth. 1444.10 Stephen Milne Perth City second going to Toby Robinson of Loughborough 1451 which is an excellent time for him uh, and third going to Caleb Hughes also under the 15 1457.34 so I think they'll be really pleased with the night's work there I think so Charlie I think uh, at this stage of the season I think that's a really good result for all three boys um, I think uh, Caleb first time I think under the 15 minute mark shot, co shot close and uh, Tony Robinson there as well so pretty good results yeah you can see some happy looking fellas at the front there all those times uh, well inside their entry times <laughs> just the last one there 28 seconds faster than the entry time so uh, <laughs> if you could do that every time you swam you'd be awful pleased yeah, we'd all be quids in at that point 